Let's do a calculation where we look at the standard state free energy difference for the combustion of glucose. And we'll also look at what temperature range is that reaction spontaneous. Now, it's the standard state free energy difference. So for this combustion reaction, we're talking about the free energy difference, delta G, between one atmosphere of carbon dioxide, pure liquid water, one atmosphere of oxygen gas, and pure solid glucose. How can I calculate that? Well, this is a case where you'll go to the tables and you'll look up the standard state free energies of formation for each of these and use the free energies of formation of the products minus the free energies of formation of the reactants. So here it is. I looked them up. Standard state free energy of formation of glucose, minus 910 kilojoules per mole. Oxygen, of course, an element in its standard state, zero. Water, minus 237, and carbon dioxide, minus 394. So I can take now the free energy for the reaction is products, six moles of water, six moles of carbon dioxide gas, minus the reactants, a mole of glucose. Of course, oxygen, zero. So some simple arithmetic gives me minus 2876 kilojoules for this chemical reaction. So it, indeed, this is a very spontaneous chemical reaction, a very large amount, 2876 kilojoules, is released per mole of glucose when it's combusted in oxygen. What temperature range is this reaction spontaneous for? Well, here's the chemical reaction and the free energy difference. Is it spontaneous over a broad temperature range? In order to do that, we need to know the enthalpy and the entropy. Those are relatively independent of temperature, and they tell us how delta G varies with temperature. So delta S for this reaction, I think we can intuitively say, without doing a calculation, delta S is greater than zero. We're producing a liquid and a gas from a solid and this gas. So we'll probably have more microstates, a, um, more ways to disperse the energy in the products than in the reactants. Complicated molecule, gas going to a liquid and more gas. The enthalpy, you may know, you've probably seen this chemical reaction, glucose burning, it is exothermic. But we don't have to use intuition for either one. We could go to some tables and do the calculations for these standard functions as well. I, I did that for the enthalpy. I went and looked up the standard enthalpies of formation of all these, and I used the enthalpies of formation of products minus reactants, and I showed that the enthalpy is indeed negative. It's an exothermic chemical reaction. So with exothermic chemical reaction and delta S, I have a intercept on the y-axis that's negative for delta G. So starts out at negative. As temperature increases, delta S is positive. That means the slope is negative. So delta G will start negative and stay negative. The plot will look something like this, a negative intercept and a negative slope. So this reaction is spontaneous for all temperatures. Delta G is less than zero for all temperatures. So this chemical reaction, spontaneous over all temperatures, and a good choice for use in metabolism of life because it's always spontaneous.